Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with the imminent arrival of the Perseverance rover at Mars. I decided that it would be a good time to remind people that I have a model of, per well, it's NASA's model of the Perseverance rover that I adapted for Kerbal Space Program and simplified somewhat because it had too many polygons. Uh, but yeah, and also I did the animation because that had to be done. So that that's it, that's the animation. Uh, the wheels are the stock wheels, but yeah, I have this and I'll link this and the Atlas rock in the video description in a special Perseverance rover pack so that people can use it. But I think it's worthwhile to discuss how to put it together so that you know. So the instruments deploy like that and so that it can fit inside its um, entry capsule, if you will. The trick here is, though, that the wheels couldn't be attached to the rover body itself because the wheels in Kerbal Space Program have to be each individual parts. And that also meant that they couldn't fold up the way it does with the rover because if you have an animation that folds stuff up uh, like, in, uh, like they would in real life, the wheels would not go along with it. So they'd either end up in state number one or state number two, but not going along with the animation and so i just did not have the rover legs i don't know what to call them the arms maybe anyway uh those uh struts we can call them struts uh do not have them animating even though they ought to because there's no way to put the wheels the wheels also have to be rescaled and so we get a little bit of the wheel over here that's a little bit awkward uh, you can use the other rover wheels and that will not have, these won't have that problem. But again, you'll have to resize them so that they're the right size for the, for the rover. But I decided that these wheels look a little bit better. So if you use tweak scale and rescale these rover wheels, uh, the back portion will not sort of float away from it. But unfortunately these, they do. But I, I, I want these because they look better, so we'll just stick with this sort of format. And when we launch it, we should lock it. So right now the motor is free, but everything should be locked when we launch it. But first, let's test it on the, on the runway and see if it runs properly. And then I'll show you how to put it on the Atlas rocket properly. And we'll test launching. I've done a similar video before, but... Probably people have completely forgotten about it and it's been drowned by hundreds of other videos since the launch of Perseverance. So we'll go over it again and I will once again try to land it, but it's tough. It's not easy to land it on Mars. And of course you'll have to use Realism Overhaul and Real Solar System. Do not, do not dare use this with stock and land it on Duna and say you landed on Mars with it, please. It probably wouldn't have the right numbers any. Well, the Atlas rocket wouldn't have the right numbers anyway, so I don't know how it worked. Well, we should deploy the instruments. So it works. It's moving right along. 6.4 meters per second, which is way faster than it ought to. Uh, and uh, if we turn... Well, we need to invert these back ones. Uh, so the wheels say max safe load 0.21 tons. The whole rover is 485 kilograms, so... That's fine. It might be a little bit lighter than it ought to be. No science equipped for it, so I can't actually scan stuff right now. And of course it's got the RTG to replenish the electric charge. So okay, that's all good. Let's revert. So now I'm going to lock the steering and also the motor. So that when it's in the fairing it won't break. And we can also add an action group to unlock those when necessary. So the symmetry seems to have worked here. 0 0.41 is what I have the scale to. Save and we can switch to the VAB. So now we have this and we do want it flat like that. And to find the parts you will type in perseverance. And after this, we need a decoupler. Well, I'm just going to pull all these parts out. There's a cruise stage. There. The heat shield. The shell. And the sky crane. But between the rover and the sky crane, we need a decoupler. 
and that's because uh, it's not good to have a decoupler be part be a part of a part that has thrusters on it. So I wanted to keep the decoupler separate, and I decided that the procedural decoupler or any of the other decouplers would be good enough. You'll have to put it upside down unless you want it to hang around with your rover, and we want it to be minimal length and minimal diameter. Okay, but the trick here is that things have to be in line with the center of mass. Otherwise, when we fire this, it is going to flip the whole thing instead of doing what it's supposed to. It's very close, as you can see. I mean, that's not bad. We don't need MLI layers. It's hydrazine here. And that will decouple using that decoupler. And then we have a shell which will decouple on its own. It has its own built-in decoupler. And then we have the cruise stage. But before we put on the cruise stage, we are going to put on the heat shield. And you can see the wheels barely clear. And that's only because I made this taller than it really is. In real life, it's a little bit flatter. But in order to allow for the clearance of the wheels, given that they're not being tucked up in the body, we had to make it a little bit taller. And so with this assembly, we're going to add the parachutes, and I just use real shoot parachutes. I'm going to put a set of drogue chutes and a, put, and a set of main chutes. I think that might be best. And it should be Kevlar. That works better on Mars. And what we want is it to be at drogue shoot and 120 meters per second at 7,000 feet is the goal. Like you could say at 8,000. Basically, that's where the heat shield separates. And its initial deployment will be 10,000-ish. And the full deployment, let's say 8,000. Nope. I wanted to apply to symmetry counterpart. Okay. And now we can also put, just in case that doesn't work well enough for us, some main shoots. Because the drake, drogue shoots don't really do a great job of slowing us down. So that's just double check. It's on Mars. Yeah. Mars, main shoot, triple shoot, Kevlar. And again, we don't want it to be too slow, but let's say 60. And in this case, we'll have it at pre deployment 8,000 and full deployment 5,000. And 60 will be fine. Apply to counterparts. Okay. Okay, then we need the cruise stage. And it's going to need to have its own power generation because it's got its own control core. It can't rely on the RTG of the rover. So, we are going to put some solar panels on top here. Increase the size a bit, so... Let me toggle that. That's a little bit better. We could put more solar panels on the side, but this time I think I'll just keep them on top. And we do need RCS ports on the side of the cruise stage. They may have them, they might have them in other places, but I just put them like this. It's already got the tanks in with hydrazine. So we want these to be hydrazine. Okay. And then once you've got that all settled, flip it around. Got Perseverance too because this is the second time I'm doing this, that's all. And we need an Atlas V. And again, I'll link the parts that I made in the video description. There are other parts that are necessary like the RCS ports or the decoupler or the rover wheels and to a large extent, those are things that come with Realism Overhaul or, I mean, come with the stock game, really, the RCS ports, or, like, procedural parts, which I hope you have as is. So we've got a uh, regular decoupler and then the first sta uh, the second stage, the Centaur stage of Atlas V. And we need, when we type in Atlas V, the RL10C. That is the engine there. Everything else is included. 
Then we want this interstage adapter, which holds on to the centaur stage, and then this boat tail, which actually goes on top of the interstage adapter like that, and attaches to it. And then we put the fairings on the boat tail. So in this case, what we want is the five meter short fairing. And then we can put on the first stage tank. And we can put on the RD-180. Oh, why is that off center? Hmm, I didn't notice that before. My mistake, just shift that a little bit. It's not got, even if you didn't shift it, it won't throw anything off. The gimbling on the engines is pretty strong. But, well, I guess I didn't notice it was a little bit off. Okay, there's that. And then I don't have any custom boosters or decoupler. I'm just using the ones from KW Rocketry. There's other packs that have Gem 63s. I think it's a Gem 63 and not the AJ60. So if we type in Gem 63, we get uh, that's the one. And you can also type in AJ60. Well, uh, AJ will bring up the AJ60A. That's the older booster for Atlas V. Now you can see the hold down thing with jigs. So that's one location for a booster, that's another, and then these three. And the booster for the boosters for Atlas V, there were four of them. Now the exact location I do not remember. But I'm gonna roughly put these decouplers in line with that, and I'll take some time, so I'll come back to you once I'm done. Okay, so I've placed the boosters and you'll have to decide or check exactly where the boosters are. I've placed them like this, but it could be that the two are on this one and that one, or they're far apart. But for now, I'm going to leave it like this. And that is not a major concern right now. One thing that is, is I... Oh, let me take off the fairing. I uh, discovered that I have a Perseverance landing script. And I want to action group stuff for it, but you will not have this, so this won't necessarily be relevant to you. Uh, we want to have a decoupling of the cruise stage. We want something to uh, activate the RCS. So let me move this out of the way. Oop, and that out of the way. Um, I guess it's toggle RCS tr thrust. Is that right? I just want to activate the RCS. So toggle RCS thrust. And also we want to arm the parachutes on nine. So arm shoot and then arm these guys, arm shoot. Okay, and then for action group eight, I mean, maybe these will be helpful for you too. Action group eight will be the separation of the heat shield. So that jettison heat shield. Action group seven is going to be jettisoning the shell, so the couple shell, and now it's on, and so we should also activate the engines of the sky crane then. And then action group six is going to be this decoupler here that will drop off the, the rover. Okay, so those are, are our landing related action groups. I've got a Perseverance too because this is the second time I'm doing this whole sequence for you. The first time being when it launched. And that's just so that I don't overwrite those craft files. Okay, so we'll see how it goes. I have a launch script as well. I guess I'll post those in the video description as well. You can try out. They're KOS scripts. So you'll have to know how to troubleshoot them if it turns out that things don't work out for you. Okay, well, our control should be from the Centaur stage, not the rover. Right now it's from the rover. So I'm going to tuck in here. Um, okay, control from here. Okay, so that's it on the pad, but we need to time warp to July 30th. 
11.50 GMT, and this is GMT time here. It's basically right after dawn. Oh, I went a little bit past. It's 11.58. We are a little bit late. Okay. Here we go. Nine minutes late. And off we go. Now the Cape Canaveral scenery is Katniss Cape Canaveral. And uh, some of the buildings like the VAB I have in the background. I forget whether that's Katniss Cape Canaveral or whether I placed it with Kerbal Constructs from the real launch sites slash real KSC pack. Those would have to be manually reconfigured for the more recent version of Kerbal Constructs and then placed manually. So it's a little bit complicated. But uh, yeah. But otherwise, the terrain is Katniss Cape Canaveral. You could just type it in Google and you'll find it. Hoping that the launch script actually works properly here. So, will the booster separation timing be right? It really depends on whether I've got exactly the same SRBs that I used uh, when I wrote the script. Because some of them have different thrust curves. Just like a second off would throw it off enough for there to be a disaster. So we will see. I don't remember if I would use these boosters for the previous time. I might have used the AJ-68s. Oh, I did. Ah. Uh, well, we're going to... Uh, still trying, but that's not going to work out right. But... We are going to have to adjust the timing on that, it looks like. I had a feeling. Okay, well, we are on the bright side, closer to the actual launch timing, so... Off we go again! Okay, going quite smoothly, but of course it's booster separation that we're interested in right now. Okay, wow, just on time. <laughs> just on time. I thought I was giving it extra time, but... Just barely safe there. Fairing set. Alright. Centaur stage time. A little bit awkward, I should put some separate trons on the first stage. The RCS is laboring under a roll wobble, but I'll just let that go for now. We're close enough to orbit and it's not using that much of the hydrazine. And shut down. Alright, so that program has ended. And you don't need to use MacJeb, but it should be pretty easy to plot something. This transit duration is a little bit long. Um, well, let's see. Basically, it's end of July. So it's August, September, October, November, December, January. Six months, and then 19 days. It's not that far off. It's about 200 days that it was en route, and we're going for 210. So I guess it's okay. Probably not too bad. If you actually want to hit Jezero Crater, though, you're going to have to do some serious finagling and figuring out exactly how you're going to arrive so that you hit the crater precisely. That, uh, that might take some work. And go. All right, we are on our way. Now, I haven't done Ingenuity, the little copter. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> that is, uh, that's too much of a little finicky business for me. There are a lot of things that I wish I had added to this mod, but I just didn't have the time. Okay, we're roughly on time here, so that's good. Basically at the middle of the Delta V range at the node. Okay, and getting ready for shutdown. Shutdown. To 0.5 meters per second. And can the RCS bring us closer? Yes, so maybe I can do the rest of RCS. Of course there's decoupling, so that'll throw us off as well. How close should I get it? It's, there's probably going to be an inclination change too. So a minor mid-course adjustment. 
will be beneficial. Okay, actually, I think the coupling will probably knock us further than that, so let me just go ahead. Let's have those activate at the same time there. And decouple. Uh, decouple. Okay, it is off. Floating away. We have been controlling from the centaur, remember? Here we have to once again tell it where to control from, otherwise it'll control from the rover. And it is on its way, and are those... Yes, those are enabled. Uh, maybe we should give a exploratory puff to make sure. Uh-oh. Maybe they're... Oh, they're not... Are they not hydrazine configured? That's gonna be rough. Um, we have a countermeasure if you forget to configure those for hydrazine. We can have the sky crane use its RCS. It's not ideal, but we can later transfer the hydrazine back down if necessary. So it looks like it's necessary. But anyway, we are going to be doing... Oh, just stop. Uh, we'll do a mid-course adjustment to correct that. So we aren't correcting that right now. Either way, just in the middle of the orbit, we are going to do a plane change. And this is time number one when you can try to figure out, but you can't really see Mars as it is when you arrive, so... You can at least get enough inclination to hit the target crater, but... Mars is obviously going to be rotating a few times, so you can't figure out exactly where you're landing. Unless you are clever. I mean, it's theoretically possible, but very difficult. What you could do is see the difference in time. So between when you do the burn and this here, divide by the time of the Martian day. And I guess you could figure it out by that. Because we have our solar panels on top, it is sun down. I don't know. Oh, no, it's not because they're not hydrazine thrusters. I, re I remember now. No, we don't, we don't actually need those. Um, what it is is enable crossfeed on the cruise stage. There we go. I was surprised that I hadn't uh, done that. All right. Now we're completely off, probably. But anyway, crisis averted. Let me top off the sky crane again. All right. Okay, so on we go to the mid-course adjustment. Okay, that's pretty much what we had there. But we're pretty far away from Mars itself. Let me see if some... There we go. That'll do. Uh, but we're rotating. Uh... Okay, well, I'll probably throw it off, but we're going to go sundown again for the power. And once we get into Mars SOI, we will do another correction. Okay, so that's for the power. We'll let SAS handle it because persistent rotation will hold it to the sun orientation. And on we go to Mars. Okay, we have entered Mars SOI. And we're oriented roughly towards one of the radial vectors, so I'm just going to go ahead and use the RCS to bring the periapsis down by... I'm pressing N for this, given the vector that we have here. And I will go for 42 kilometers, because that has previously been a good thing. Uh, okay, whatever that is, that's fine. Okay, so we're coming down and... I'd like to come down on the daylight side. We are coming down roughly on the daylight side, though we might cross over into night. You can see like that. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how Mars is going to rotate by the time we get there. Uh, the, the light situation will be the same, but the actual terrain underneath and whether we're going to be anywhere close to Jezero Crater is something I'm not thinking about right now. So, now... Let's see what happens with the re not the re-entry script, with the entry, descent, and landing script, and whether that's any good. Now, as far as staging here is concerned, we don't 
particularly care, I think, because everything is on action groups. Nothing is going to happen via regular staging anyway. And I've got to copy the landing script. And we'll see how that works. It has to be started above 400 kilometers. So let's get it in here. And I will want it in the sky crane. So that's the sky crane. I did not want parachute landing and I didn't want module manager. Okay. Auto that atmospheric autopilot keeps turning on whenever I press P. That's its hot key. Make sure to have everything else off, like smart ASS. If you're using KOS. Okay, getting ready for a cruise stage separation. Hopefully. Oh, that didn't happen quite the way. I mean, it separated. But uh, we want to focus on this right now. Maybe I should move the cruise stage away a bit. There we go. It's independently controllable, as you can see. I'm going to... I think I miss action group things. I should have activated the RCS on here too, right there. And we should be controlling from here. Okay. That's a little bit confused right now. We, are conf we were controlling from the rover again. So before starting the KOS script, maybe control from the sky crane. I probably knew that at some point and forgot all about it. It's having trouble getting to retrograde here. Sometimes when it gets stuck like that, I turn on SAS to encourage it. What was action group 9 involving? That I actually set that to be where the RCS is enabled. Toggle RCS thrust. I don't want to toggle RCS thrust now. We've already done that. So we'll just arm the parachutes there. I don't remember if there was anything else I wanted to do there, but... So that's atmospheric interface at 125 kilometers. There we go. Atmospheric interface and the parachutes are enabled, armed. Our minutes of terror here. Let's see. It is sort of puffing away with the RCS, but that's not a huge problem right now. The RCS ports are just not powerful enough to guzzle the hydrazine to any great degree. We could turn the RCS off and just let the atmosphere hold on to it. Just force that. Uh, you can see it's got sort of a minor imbalance, which might cause us problems later. Well, we've got re-entry heat or entry heat. I'll let it have the RCS again. Just so that it doesn't feel like it's off. This script, I mean. Otherwise, it won't recognize its situation very well, potentially. Okay, we're coasting on down. We are 27 kilometers above the surface and still descending. The size of the heat shield versus our mass means that we get quite a lot of drag and it's pretty safe for parachute deployment. I've definitely had higher heat shield loadings in entry to Mars before. Those are more troublesome. This is fairly mild. Okay. We've got the drogue shoots. Full drogue shoot deployment. Main shoot pre-deployment. Now it gets all really dicey with the sky crane after the separation of the heat shield and then the shell. Okay, we've got full deployment of that. And heat shield. 
is 3,200, I believe. I'll get ready just in... Okay, no, I already did it. Oh, it's gonna come back at us again. Oh, ow. But we're okay. Nothing broke, apparently. But what is it doing? That's not what I wanted it to do. What does it think it is? Just keep the engine- Okay, no, 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 it's using them. Oh gosh, what was all that business? No! Just use them. <laughs> no, it's- Okay, just, just- Oh gosh. I hope it's right. No, uh, we're sideways, we're sideways. Ah! Uh, okay, Sky Crane is doing Sky Crane thing. <laughs> that was awkward. Let's go back to the rover. Oh, no. 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 Uh, we might be too far away from the rover now. Math was not working precisely for us there. Okay, we have a rover. It is backsliding a bit. Oh, it is active. Deploy instruments. I think it's safe. Uh, are, are any of the wheels broken? Operational. 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 It's working! It's power sliding! <laughs> uh, well, it's a turning arc is a little bit more than it was on the runway. Yep. We've done it. Uh, that was a heck of a landing script, but we've done it. It worked. So, Perseverance is on Mars here, as you can see. And I'll link what I can in the video description. Uh, but you may have to figure a few things out for yourself. So it's not necessary. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy, but there you have it. Well, with this successful landing of the Perseverance rover on Mars, even though a little bit sloppy, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.